this, this is really nice. But... Marva Dotson is a Massalonian well, through and through. That's what they call you if you live here and feel a part of this former canal town, former steel town, about 10 miles west of Canton. Her parents' families moved here from Alabama decades ago. They worked hard and were able to purchase a home on 13th Street, Southeast Massillon. Her mother was a domestic worker who got $6 a day, and her dad worked in the mills. But up until recently, such stories of black Massalonians weren't well documented. And when it comes to school, Dodson says she didn't get any sort of history about people who looked like her. Oh, no, not at all. We had Ohio history, American history, and world history. None of the three included black history. And that's one of the reasons that the Massillon Museum is gathering the stories of African Americans who trace their heritage to this town. The museum recently hosted a Black History Archives Day. Area residents were invited to stop by the museum with their family photos, documents, and stories. In our collection, for the most part, it's mostly donated artifacts. So whatever the people have given to the museum is what we have to pull from. So it was brought to our attention that a lot of what we share is from the Civil War era, um, you know, the Underground Railroad, and kind of the late 1800s. But that was really where our collection and our archives stop as far as donated things and stories. Um, so we realized that maybe people didn't know that they could donate their artifacts here. And this had to be about 1946 and 45. Circa 1946, 45, 46. Okay, and do you know each one of the... This is Andrew Perkins. Okay. And he's buried in Ross County down in Chillicothe. It's not the traditional model you might assume is used for building a collection. It isn't a curator traveling to a distant city to dig up the bones of an ancient culture. It's uncovering some history closer to home from the people who lived it. Uh, we did three community archives days to kind of have an open house. Come and, and let us scan your photographs. You know, and while you wait, you can peruse our collection of unidentified photographs and peruse things that we've already collected. And then at the end of a scanning, you get your items back and you get a USB with those scans on them. We've hosted some uh, oral history workshops, so how to go about interviewing your family members. Yes, we, we only could live on a certain part of the town. It was called the boondocks. That's way out where you had to have uh, running water, chickens running around. Uh -huh. and, you know, had outhouses and yes. things like that. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. <laughs> we have uh, reached out uh, to, I believe we're up to 10 different interviews with community members. They got the idea that uh, we got to live with the white and the blacks, and regardless of who it was, after, you know, everybody began to realize, you know, this is what we got, this is what we're going to have to do. One of the biggest artifact collections came from Marva Dotson. Where do I, do I have it written here? My grandmother was coming to visit us from Alabama. She traveled by train, and we met her at the train station right over here uh, off of Erie Street in Massillon. Her family has collected local African-American history for years in the form of newspaper clippings. If someone spotted a story about a black person in the news, they got off the scissors. In my growing up, there were not a lot of articles that were in the paper about them. So when we would see something, of course, you know, that was a rare occasion. After the word got out that she had collected all this material, Dotson was invited to make presentations around town. She bought large pieces of poster board along with some gold lettering, and she created thematic displays that told some of the stories she had gathered. And there were so many stories to tell. From 1911 to 1969, that Maslin did not have a black attorney. Now what does that tell you? Yep. <laughs> Yes. Maslin has a rich history of African Americans and they're a very accomplished people who walked among us, lived with us, socialized with us, that were just a part of our lives. 
and uh, their importance has been minimized up until now. So hopefully this history project will bring about a change. I hope it won't be temporary, like February is Black History Month, and then after February you don't hear anything. <laughs> you know, we call it missing history because it was missing from the historical record. Yeah, I mean, the, if we're missing the contributions of African Americans in Massillon, then we're really not telling the full story of the history of Massillon. Um, so it's been so important um, to fill in these, these missing history pieces, these gaps in, uh, in our collection, in our archives, and in our understanding of how this community lived and, and worked and contributed to uh, the wonderful town that it is today.